is multitasking possible? Until recently, I would have said that I was an excellent multitasker. I read an article a few years ago that said multitasking isn't possible, and I actually didn't believe it for a while, but it did plant a seed. Years later, I think I'm finally starting to believe that it's not actually possible and can even have negative effects on our mental state when we try to do too much at once. So what does the research say? Dr. David Meyer, professor of psychology at the University of Michigan says, as long as you're performing complicated tasks that require the same parts of the brain and you need to devote all that capacity for these tasks, there just aren't going to be enough resources available to add anything more. He states that we will either have to slow down or we'll start to make mistakes. So basically, it might seem like we're getting more done, but we aren't. The brain takes so much time to kind of switch back and forth that we're actually going slower and if we have to go back to fix the mistakes that we've made, even more time is wasted. So here's a few things from the research. A 2011 research study from the University of California, San Francisco found that multitasking negatively impacts our short-term memory. Neuroscientists say that multitasking drains your mind's energy reserves causing you to lose focus and become more anxious. It inhibits creative thinking and it stops us from getting into the flow state. And I think this is the one that speaks to me the most. Have you ever been in such a flow state that you were just blown away by how much you were able to get done and the quality of work that you were able to produce, you were like, man, I was just in flow. And that does not happen when you're trying to do too much at once. So for me, that was the clincher that I'm like, you know what, when I'm in that flow state, I'm 100% focused or at least as much as I can on that one thing. Harvard psychologist, um, Daniel Gilbert and his partner, Matthew, found that people spend almost 47%, 47% of their waking hours thinking about something other than what they're currently doing. So what can we do about that? Here are some simple techniques you can implement right away. Of course, I always say start small. Try just one this week, and when it becomes a habit, you can consider implementing more. The book, The 4-Hour Work Week, suggests checking email no more than twice a day. I think the author is down to once a week. I'm not sure how he does that, but <laughs> he recommends first thing in the morning and then about 30 minutes to an hour before your work day ends. So you'll find what works best for you. So this is actually a really tough one for me. I tend to always have email open and I always have messenger up. So I'm going to even start easier than that. I'm not going to do only two times a day. Whenever I'm doing like a 30 minute to an hour task, I'm just gonna close the email, close messenger, put my phone in the other room or put it on do not disturb so that I'm not distracted by it. And so let's talk about those 30 minute to 90 activities. So that's actually blocking our time. And this is a great way to kind of get a lot in in a day, but you're completely focused on one thing at a time. And then in between the 30 to 90 minute blocks, take a break. Give your mind some time to rest. So this can be a short walk, some deep breaths, make yourself a cup of tea. And all of these can be even more beneficial by adding just a drop of calming essential oil or an energizing essential oil, whatever you really need at that time. So here's an example of somewhere that I was so proud of my multitasking. <laughs> there is a huge hill leading up to my house. Now I live at the base of the Appalachian Mountains, so it's not like a Rocky Mountain, but it's a, it's a hill, it's a good hill. 
My neighbors who live below me actually call it Carter Hill. They get to stop walking at their houses and I got to keep going up <laughs> Carter Hill. It's a tough one. And I don't, I don't really enjoy it. Like the whole time I'm doing the walk, I'm trying not to remember that Carter Hill's waiting for me at the end. But I used to check my Facebook, check Messenger, get some things done while I'm walking up this hill. And I would barely notice, like by the time I'm all checked in and responding to a few things, the hill is over. But I've recently learned sometimes it's okay to sit with discomfort. And during that time, I've also been able to notice beautiful red birds that I had never seen before. Other animals feel the breeze on my face. Think about gratitude for the break during the day and really enjoy the rest of that mental break where before I was getting back to work, before my mental break was really over. So I was kind of chipping myself out of that mental break. And I use this time now to really be mindful of my surroundings. What do I smell, hear, see, maybe taste? <laughs> and I'm actually going to be covering more mindfulness examples in next week's episode. So make sure you check in. That's going to help us kind of be very present where we are and not trying to multitask, but in a very different way than what I've talked about in this episode. Please subscribe or follow, and I will see you next time.